Right, so excitement for WWDC slowly building up and German gives us new details on the soft upgrades we can expect with iOS, iPadOS, tvOS, macOS and also watchOS. And so let's delve into all of this but first make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumours and with that being said, let's just talk in. Right, so beginning with iOS, German does tell us there's going to be significant changes with the lock screen on the iPhone, including wallpapers that have widget-like capabilities. Now I'm gonna be honest guys, I have no idea what that means. What comes to mind is widgets directly on the lock screen, like some older Android phones had. Now I found that completely useless, I never used them on those older Android phones. And so yeah, I'm wondering why Apple's giving us this on the iPhone. But anyways, moving on to more exciting news, German has also told us that within iOS 16 builds, there is support for always-on displays coming to the future iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. So yeah, this was rumoured to come to the iPhone 13 series, it didn't, but now we have iPhone 14 Pro rumours suggesting the displays are going to go down to 1Hz, that of course could allow for always-on displays. And this is a feature I dearly miss from Android, and so I'm glad that German believes we could see this with the iPhone 14 series. Anyways, moving to iPadOS, German does tell us some pretty exciting news because apparently we could see major changes to windowing and multitasking on the iPad. Now this is the biggest thing I've been wanting because being restricted to having two apps on the sides and also a slide over menu does kind of suck and so having floating windows would be pretty neat. And there's been references to this in patents and also WebKit and so yeah I do think there's a very strong chance we see this with iPadOS. I'm also hoping we do see a DeX-like mode come to the iPad. I do think external display support needs a massive improvement, and so giving us a desktop-like OS when connecting the iPad to an external display would be pretty neat. Now regarding tvOS, German simply says there's going to be more smart home tie-ins, but that's a pretty vague statement so there's not much to say regarding that. Now moving on to messages, German does say that we could see social media aspects come to the messages app. This would be a smart move because many do use the iPhone for iMessage alone and so tying them in and getting them addicted to this like a social media platform could of course make these consumers lifelong iOS users. And apparently the focus is going to be with audio messages and so what I'm thinking is that similar to WhatsApp and the whole status thing maybe we could see that but with audio messages on iMessage. Not sure how useful that's going to be but that of course could appeal to the teens and the millennials who are on iMessage on a daily basis. The health app's also going to see plenty of new features which I guess is to be expected. We always see at least a few new features with Apple's applications and so I'm not sure why German's mentioning this. However, he does say the health app is not coming to the iPad or the Mac anytime soon. But anyways, the vagueness continues because regarding WatchOS 9, German tells us we should see significant improvements that affect day-to-day -day operating of the watch and navigation. So yeah, there's that. Again, not much to say because German does really not give us a lot of details. But yeah, let's hope we get some pretty major updates. But yes, actually I do remember German in the past telling us we could see new watch faces and also a low power mode, which I do think is pretty nice, especially when traveling with the watch. Finally, we come to macOS. This is going to get redesigned apps and also a major overhaul to system preferences, which is going to bring it more in line with the settings app on iOS, where of course you can access all the settings for the individual apps on the device. Now to be honest, I'm kind of surprised Apple is giving us redesigns to the actual apps, considering the Big Sur redesign was two years ago. And also do remember that Apple's had iOS basically the same since iOS 7, so the fact the Mac is getting redesigns this soon is pretty surprising to be honest. But yeah, that's basically everything German tells us. Some of it's pretty vague, but other parts of it are very exciting stuff, 
But tell me in the comments below, guys, what is the number one feature you want to see Apple launch at WWDC? Anyways, thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the good above on details regarding the iPhone 14 series. And on that note, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya, peeps.